plans almost take it in Europe. Not didn't take it at the end. It was Fiendsmith Ubel. Noel here just won YCS Lil 2024 with Fiendsmith Ubel, which was, you know, apparently the best deck in the room, but not by a lot. We're not back into a tier zero format. We're kind of in a mid-tier flatter format where the best deck isn't the best deck by a lot. And of course it's Europe, so you can't not have plans in the finals, which is crazy. Take a look at this. This was surprising to me. Deck breakdown of day one of YCS Lil. This is going to be the recap video. We're going to go through some games. We're going to look at the meta. We're going to look at some contenders of the format. And uh, we're almost at Rage of the Abyss, so that's going to change the whole thing. Fiends with you, Bell. Most represented in the room. 1,900 duelists, 16% overall. It's honestly not that much. Tenpai at 12%, Runic at 12%, Fiendsmith Snake Eyes, 7%. Which is the fourth best deck now, after the ban list? Seemingly, something has been done. Brand at a 3, Labyrinth and Voiceless Voice at 2 each. But, conversion. Top 32, because th there weren't many that many duelists in the room. Usually, European YCSs are 2,500. But... 34 Fiendsmith Ubels in the top cut is a great conversion for the best deck. 10 by 16, and then Runic Chimera. Honestly, kind of surprisingly, I don't think the deck is that good. Labyrinth and Ritual Beast, and we've had a few other, like, <laughs> notably missing here, Snake Eyes. No Snake Eyes on the map. That's going to change pretty soon with Rage of the Abyss, but we'll have to see. Apparently... Limiting opening of the Spirit Gates was just a slap on the wrist. And with Tenpai, Prosperity, and Second Summoning doesn't even matter. Um, th these are the top eight. Congratulations. Congratulations to Noel here, Herman Hansen, making a pretty legendary undefeated round at Swiss. I know a lot of people have been rooting for him. Unfortunately, he didn't take it all the way, but tippable nonetheless. We started off the day with Samir Bashar, a very well known previous. European national, uh, European champion, playing sprites, didn't make it all the way to top cut, I think, but we have been seeing the effects of a lot of the really strong board breakers in the game, lightning storms and droplets and, and v the variety of hand traps, and I think Mulchami Perulia was also apparent as a very, very good card, and it's really scary to think that in just a couple weeks we're going to have a new Mulchami, which is going to be, like, pretty incredible. So, we have been seeing some rogue decks trying to compete. I think with Lil, it was specifically a format that not a lot of people were taking that seriously. And I think one of those people was definitely world competitor Gabriel Nets on this grass pile, right? One of the last cards impacted by the Forbidden and Limited list was the grass is, uh, That Grass is Greener, which is obviously a card that is used for like 60 card pile decks. You can see those boards right now with things like the Zombie Vampire using the Horus engine or here the Lightsworn engine with Felice on board. And of course Nemesis Flag getting access to Arch Nemesis Protoss, which is just an incredible card. Utilized by this deck and also utilized by Ritual Beast, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. Grass is something that is not making any waves in the matter right now. A card which is good, at one, with not a lot of good decks that can run it, because most decks want to, be on, want to be on 40 and not 60. So we have been seeing experimentation with Sprite, we have been seeing experimentation with this pile, which is, I think, really, really cool. And I think Grass might be able to even jump up to two in the next Forbidden Limited list. They probably won't do that. Um, but Protoss is proving to be a very, very good card. And I think Protoss is currently holding it's the glue that's holding ritual beast which was the deck that took herman hansen to an undefeated 10-0 in the swiss rounds of ycs lil which is incredible with ritual beast first in swiss obviously protoss is very synergistic and can be easily accessed and it's a card that konami keeps in mind that is holding this new strategy that is making waves and it's a new deck that they want to support and Protoss is carrying that deck so it's going to be on the table. We have seen how good 
this deck and how explosive this deck can be in a, an experienced player's hand. Dominus Purge is an incredible card that can be run in this deck. So overall, I think it's a really good showing to the deck. A skilled player can run this pretty successfully. And Herman, shout out to him. Because if you look at Giuseppe's life points, there are 22,000. Because <laughs> he got dogwooded. Uh, I mean, Herman did, of course. And he was able to beat him through that. You can see also a minute 50 on the clock. And still clutching it, which is kind of amazing. Moving on to another relatively surprising pick. Fiendsmith, Voiceless Voice. Not super surprising, given the fact that both engines are good. Like, look at this board. SPL Knight, a pop with a trap, Desiree, and an Omni Negate with targeted protection and sort of like a Nightmare Pain effect um, with with in terms of the battle phase where you can only attack the Skull Guardian. But on the other side, another deck that has been second most represented. We can see... You, can you guess what it is without reading the deck? Dark Hole, Raigeki, Chain, Droplet... It's Tenpai. The deck is still a menace in the TCG right now. The deck is insane. It could be relatively punishing. We've seen here that Valerio, in this game specifically, could have won. But, you know, sometimes when you get hit with like three, four board breakers, it kind of puts a dent in your train of thought. And I think we saw it here pretty pretty good. Because he wasn't supposed to, win to lose this game. He did eventually. I don't remember who won the match, but... Tenpai Dragon is something that you should be very, very prepared for and understand the matchup when you go into an event, no matter which deck you're playing, because I think it's the most punishing deck for the opponent. The opponent, you know, they get slammed with three board breakers like this for, for a full board wipe, nonetheless, right? But at the end of the day, sometimes a simple interaction can just win you the game because usually the engine count in the hand is relatively low. You can see here that he had two engine cards and three board breakers, um, and I think an additional board breaker as well because he went second, and a little bit better concentration, understanding of the deck could have won Voiceless Voice, at least that game. Now we have Noel here at top eight versus White Forest Runic. Runic was, I believe, third most represented in the room, and where a deck can dish out a Chaos Angel that is unaffected by card effect, with Ubel that has lost its one copy of Nightmare Pain, there's no win condition here. And we saw Noel almost lose the match. He's the YCS champion, but he almost lost that match. Runic White Forest proving to be relatively good into the meta. Dark Ruler no more. Evenly matched. Those are cards that are played in this deck. Combined with cards like the Runic cards, where you can go... You don't even have to play Droplets, even though he does... You can even go Dark Ruler no more, and if they, they try to negate with the Desiree, you can negate maybe with another Runic card, Runic Destruction on the equip, then maybe you can hit the Rudress. But we are also seeing the, the flip side of the meta, and that is the best deck, and that's Ubel, and the board that it can dish out, which are pretty incredible. I think it's like, you know, the, the epitome of combo decks in Yu-Gi-Oh! Like, when you have a combo deck that is the best deck that is Tier 1, you see these boards with like eight or nine layers of interaction on them, which is just like, you don't you don't ever have any cards in hand. And when they have a card that can play around Dark Ruler, you don't even have that, which is frustrating, annoying, obviously, you know. It is what it is. Now he's seen, shout out, fellow YouTuber, obviously a lot more successful than I am, because he's on the main stage, top four. However, when you don't make a Desiree, this is what happens. Or Verudras, because I've been playing a lot of Master Duel recently, grinding the DC with you, Bell, and like no Verudras, no Desiree. You have two Omni Negates in the TCG right now. So to be losing to Evenly is very unfortunate. And again, we see Yulius on the other side with plants. He was in the finals eventually. And yeah, very, very unfortunate. Um, I think this was here um, possibly some sort of illegal activation or misplay. But eventually, at the end of the day, it didn't matter because it really, like, this evenly matched. Julius draws so, so good that, you know, it, it just broke the entire field apart. And this is the, the importance of Omni Negates, where, you know, Baron is banned, Savage is banned, 
Those cards got banned so that equalizers like evenly matched could live. And when you have cards like Verudras and Caesar and Desiree in your belt that can be like utilized super, super easily with like one card combos, it's really, really broken. So we are seeing here still the ability of plants to compete. I don't know if it's the European water or not, but you know, Julius obviously an accomplished, accomplished player, previous German Nationals winner this year, and YCS champion in Dortmund, I believe, last time. Showing off that, you know, if you draw enough board breakers and one vanilla plant monster, you know, I think Jasmine, I've been saying this always, I'm not salty about this. Ro like, people are going to be upset of me, like, oh, why are you saying that a rogue deck like plants need to be hit when they're playing against a seven interruption you bellboard? Well, Aroma Seraphy Jasmine is not a fair card. And people are going to have to deal with it. You know, Link 2s that summon from the deck usually end up on the ban list. And I'm expecting the same for Yama, by the way. So don't, don't say that I'm, you know, biased. But yeah, evenly Dark Ruler, unexpected die. GG's. But that is not what happened in the finals. Uh, in the finals, it was a little bit more scrappier, I suppose. And it ended up going down to the wire, actually going up pretty convincingly with Noel swiping or sweeping Julius for a 2-0. But Terra Incarnate reflects the damage back. And with a huge nib token and Nightmare Pain and Julius on half-life points, that was enough to end the game right there. And again, congratulations to Noel. I think in conclusion, we're seeing that you belt is the best deck because it's a classic it's a classic combo deck and it's one of the only ones that has the actual Omni Negate with Verudras. It's the only deck that can run it. I can't think of any other meta decks that have that Omni Negate power. And obviously it's not only that. It's the fact that Phantom of Ubel is an insane card. It's insane. The summoning condition is just out of this out of this world. So we are gonna see a shift. In a couple weeks, with Azamina coming into the picture, will it be enough? I'm not sure, to be honest. Like, Azamina solves a lot of the consistency issues with Snake Eye. They don't increase the ceiling by that much, because they only add extension to the board and possibly an Omni Negate and a board piece. However, it doesn't change the landscape of the de what the deck can do by a lot. And another thing that's going to happen in a couple weeks is that Dominus Impulse and Mulchami Flawless are going to be released, which is going to give Tenpai a huge boost. And again, the deck is very punishing. Very, you know, could lose you the game if you don't do the things exactly right. It's not that forgiving, as people might say. It is relatively forgiving, and it's going to have a big, like a couple big two crutches to lean on with Rage of the Abyss. Thank you so much for watching. Leave your comments down below, thoughts on the meta. And if you do want to pick up some Rage of the Abyss, head over to tierzerogames.com and kongscards.co.uk in the description below. Pick up singles, you know, if you can afford it. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.